The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I am going, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe them. The Gospel of the Lord. Which of the two did the will of his father? This is the question that Jesus asks in the gospel today after telling the parable of the two sons. Doing the will of God is something which is fundamental in our spiritual lives. There's a story told about Mother Teresa, and one day a reporter saw her picking up a dying person off the streets in Calcutta and asked her, Mother Teresa, aren't you disappointed that you're not more successful, that there's thousands and thousands of people dying on the streets here and you can't help them all? And Mother Teresa's response was, God didn't call me to be successful. God calls me to be faithful. So again, doing the will of God is what is fundamental in our spiritual lives. I'm reminded of another neat story about Mother Teresa as well, also a reporter, uh, looking at the work she was doing, picking up the dying off the streets in Calcutta, and some of them had big, open, gaping wounds that were smelling very badly. And the reporter said, Mother Teresa, I wouldn't do what you do for a million dollars. And Mother Teresa answered, Neither would I. Great response. Realizing that she doesn't do this for money, she doesn't do it for any reward, just recognizing the person of Jesus in the poor and in the dying in a special way. When we pray the Our Father, we pray, Thy will be done. But I think sometimes we can be tempted to just kind of gloss over that and uh, not really think about what we're saying, what it is we're praying. Sometimes we, myself included, can really mean or really want, Lord, please do my will, rather than your will be done. There's kind of a step forward in prayer when we move from saying, Lord, please bless my project, please bless and grant what I want to do, to changing our prayer to, Lord, what is your will? Help me to do what it is you want me to do. We have quite a bit of direction in Scripture as to what God's will is. We're reminded of the two greatest commandments when Jesus says the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And he says the second is like it, you're to love your neighbor as yourself. We have direction as well in the Ten Commandments. We're reminded that those are Ten Commandments and not Ten Suggestions. Jesus affirms the validity of the Ten Commandments when a young person comes up and asks him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he first of all goes through the Ten Commandments. So we have the benefits of Scripture. We have the benefits of church teaching to help us in, in many different areas as to what uh, the Lord's will is for us. If we're not sure about what the church teaching is, we have a great resource in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And uh, looking up in the back in the index, you can find a particular issue and uh, it'll teach about that and show where it's backed up or uh, founded on passages in Scripture. Doing the will of the Father, we have this model in the prayer of Jesus as well. When Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he is praying, surrendering to God's will, he says, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass me by, but not my will, but yours be done. So in his humanity at that time, Jesus was not looking forward to the brutal suffering and death he would undergo and dying on the cross, but he was surrendering his will to the Father. Not my will, but yours be done. We also have the model of the Blessed Virgin Mary at the Annunciation. After Gabriel announces she is to be the mother of Jesus, Mary says, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Prayer has a great role in us discerning the will of God in particular instances. Uh, we are to ask and to listen, and God can oftentimes speak to us in many different ways. Yes, through scriptures, sometimes in the depths of our heart, uh, sometimes in our mind, sometimes when I'm praying, I, uh, asking a certain question of God, sometimes an immediate thought comes to mind, and I've come to know and trust to that oftentimes is God giving me a response. Other times it comes later on in the day or the next day through someone else and somewhat something that they say, and I recognize, okay, this is God answering my prayer here. 
There's a famous quote from uh, Thomas Merton about uh, following God's will. I'll share that with you now. Thomas Merton writes, My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Again, this beautiful prayer by Thomas Burton, uh, recognizing that sometimes we don't know exactly where the Lord is calling us to, but uh, trusting that, just desiring that, wanting that, seeking that, is itself pleasing to God. And the end, he kind of ties it in with a, a section from uh, Psalm 23, a beautiful psalm which begins, the Lord is my shepherd. It's another beautiful prayer called uh, the Romero Prayer, and it's kind of attributed to St. Uh, Oscar Romero, who was a, an archbishop in El Salvador during the time of the Civil War there and was murdered for standing up uh, for the rights of the people and, and standing up against an oppressive government that was killing people down there. So Oscar Romero writes the following. It helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it's even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water the seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Again, Oscar Romero recognizing the small but significant uh, contribution we make in doing uh, God's will and contributing to the kingdom of God. As we continue with the celebration of the Eucharist, let us pray that we may always strive to know and to do God's will in our lives making our own the prayer of Jesus in the garden, not my will, but yours be done.